While we are in the thick of annual meeting season in Canada, and BNM Bloomberg has just released an analysis that found more than 80% of companies listed on the influential S&P TSX 60 index, Canada's largest publicly traded corporations, had at least one current director on their board of directors that did not have a financial stake in the firm in terms of ownership of those companies' shares. You can read that story on our website, bnmbloomberg.ca. To talk about it further, we're joined by a governance expert. He's Richard LeBlanc. Professor of Governance, Law and Ethics at York University. Uh, Richard, thanks a great deal. What, 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 are, what are the reasonable expectations of a shareholder of a Canadian publicly traded company in terms of ownership by directors of shares in that company? Well, we know, Paul, academically, that there's a strong relationship between significant shareholdings by directors in the form of common shares and the firing of an underperforming CEO. So boards tend to act better when there's an alignment and they have skin in the game. They think like investors. So what we want to see is sizable holdings, uh, reasonable uh, by all directors. And there's number two is a signaling effect is uh, investors tell me, well, when I look at a board, Richard, one of the first things I look at is shareholder ownership. And Elon Musk did this uh, with the Twitter board. And if, if you see directors that don't have confidence in a company and don't own shares, why should you as an investor own shares? So uh, there's an empirical relationship between share, share ownership and effective governance. And second is it's, it, it attracts investors because it demonstrates that all directors have confidence in the company by owning uh, shares. How, uh, how different is it, if at all, from ownership by management? Management, of course, are the people that run the company on a day-to-day -day basis. Governance is more overarching. Well, I, it's, it's very important for management, obviously. They tend to own uh, long-term and short-term. You want to pay for performance. You want uh, the, potentially the use of options and performance-based shares. But somehow, when it gets to the board of directors, it, it becomes a little more passive. And we have now uh, deferred share units and activist investors say, well, those really aren't shares and, and you're not paying tax on them and you're deferring them. And these are for, for directors, you're deferring them until you retire. So you don't actually own the shares, investors argue, and you haven't actually bought the shares. Bought means you take out your checkbook and you cut a check for common shares. At, so at, 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 at market prices, correct? Not at not not prices. not at a discount being given not to you any, by the company. That's exactly right, Paul. So uh, the this DSU has surfaced and it's a bit of a of a of a cop out actually because uh, investors tell me directors haven't cut a check, they don't buy the shares, they don't own the shares because they don't actually own common shares and they're often sold at a discount. So directors get a bit of a free pass. Uh, when it comes to to uh, holding themselves responsible for shareholder uh, ownership of, of actual common shares. Yeah, there's a, a, an adage that we often hear with respect to share ownership, certainly by management, and that's that uh, an executive may sell shares of his or her company for a variety of reasons, for personal financial planning uh, purposes, to uh, uh, finance a significant expense, but there's only one reason uh, that an insider like a, uh, a, a, a an executive or a director would buy shares, again, at the market price of his or her company, and that's because they believe that those, invest those shares are a good investment. Would you agree? That's right. And if you're an investor looking at a company, you're saying, well, hang on a second here. If, inve if, if directors don't have confidence to use their own money to buy shares, why should I as an investor have confidence? And the other thing that institutional and activist investors tell me is directors get the shares given to them. They get these DSUs every year. So let's say $100,000, 50% cash, 50% this equity accumulates regardless of your own performance as a director and regardless of, of the company's performance. So uh, activist investors critique, they, they say directors don't really have skin in the game because they don't own the shares, they don't buy the shares, and they get the shares regardless of performance. So, uh, so I think there's a lot of reform that can occur for the way directors are paid and thinking like shareholders. And I think uh, David George Kosh really did a superb job at, at identifying the TSX 60 companies, including major companies where less than half of the directors don't own shares. These are major companies like Thomson Reuters, Hydro One, Magna, 
CAE, Power Corporation. So I think there's a lot of reform here that can occur. Interesting. Uh, at the beginning of our conversation, you mentioned that academic research shows that companies perform better uh, when, they, when there is share ownership on the, on the board of directors. Uh, let's circle back to that topic. Well, we see, we see that uh, with Twitter. And this is empirical, so this is across all companies. But, you know, Elon Musk said that Twitter is undervalued. He now arranged financing yesterday. And I think it, this started with a tweet by him that there wasn't substantial ownership of shares or confidence in, in Twitter. So activists are swimming around and they're targeting uh, companies that that aren't uh, tough on their CEO and allow non-performance to occur. And, and one of the first things that activists look at uh, they tell me is they they before they look at anything else is share ownership by directors. So the TSX 60 laggards in this study that BNN has done would be well served to uh, to to uh, create a a guideline or a rule that all directors have to have meaningful shareholder ownership. I think that's the takeaway from your study, Paul. You you use the phrase guideline or rule. Uh, uh, boards of directors, companies are perfectly clear to make this an obligation, are they? That's right, as a condition for, for, for coming onto the board. Institutional shareholders are very permissive here. They say DSUs are okay, but I think boards themselves have to step up. Otherwise, there's, there, the activists are, are, are trolling the waters at, as we speak, and, and, and they are looking. So you, you, there's no place to hide, really. So I think a, 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 a rule created by a board that we all have to have skin in the game, uh, we all have to think like investors, I think, is the way to go for the laggards of the TSX 60 uh, from your study.